Good evening, everyone, Ladies and smiling. welcome to the joint meeting of the Historical Commission and the Historic District Commission. It's Tuesday, February 15th, and it is six o'clock. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. So first, can I get a roll call for the Historical Commission? Uh, Joyce Rogers. Present. Connie Soule. You're muted. Here. Ruben Amaral. Here. Richard Mancini. Here via and Zoom. And Kristen Cantara Oliveira attending remotely by Zoom. So we are missing, we still have um, one, two, three, four, five. We still have two open seats on the Historical Commission. Now the Historic District Commission. Connie Soul. Here. Jason Bouchard Naraki. Here. Richard Mancini. Here via Zoom. And Kristen Cantara Oliveira attending remotely by Zoom. We have all those in attendance. We do have three open seats still on the Historic District Commission. Uh, do we have any citizen input? I, I didn't receive anything. I don't know if anyone else did. Nothing, okay. Uh, moving on, notice of intent to demolish. I only had one request and that was for 38 Judge Street. And 38 Judge Street is not on the uh, register. So I just sent a letter saying that the property was not on the register. Okay, correspondence moving on. Uh, the first thing we have is a request for a letter of support from Megan Gardard, who is with the architectural team. And I am going to uh, let them speak, introduce themselves and let us know what it is they're looking for. Yes, hi everyone. I'm Megan Goddard from the architectural team. We designed the project Knitting Mill Apartments um, in, um, hold on one second. Um, and we are nom we nominated it for the Preservation Massachusetts Award, and we are looking for the Historic Commission support. Um, and as part of that nomination, just if you could say some supporting words, we are more than happy to provide a drafted letter of support um, for your review and sign off if easier, or if you would prefer to write a letter on your own behalf, um, that would work as well. Okay, so I know I sent everyone um some information about this back a few weeks ago. So does anyone have any questions? No, I think, I have we're, one. I think we're all familiar with the um, the Knitting Mills Apartments project. I don't know if any one of you had the chance to go inside and see what they look like, but um, I've been there before for a meeting and it really is incredible. The building is beautiful. What What is this nomination? Um, <laughs> do what is what are the content of the nomination preservation massachusetts looks um for noteworthy projects that preserve the um historical landscape within the commonwealth of massachusetts and we are nominating mini mill apartments as one of those examples um, to preserve a historic um building in the commonwealth um, and converting it to new modern day use, um, especially with providing quality, affordable housing for the aging demographic. Um, it's, you know, giving back to the Fall River community, as well as preserving that um, landmark history. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and yeah, is this okay. an award uh, 
presentation that that's going to be received if you get nominated or Correct. is it the proper okay megan is that nomination for the state of massachusetts because i understand knitting mill uh, comes under management from new york is this a state of massachusetts it is based on its location okay correct and that that owner operator has a few other properties, you know, in Massachusetts, New York, um, as well as uh, Connecticut too. So, um, but the the application and the nomination is is through the Massachusetts uh, Preservation or, or Map uh, Preservation Massachusetts. Okay. Well, I I I don't mind if it, you know I don't mind making a motion to. Uh, send a letter uh, uh, to the you know uh, to the tat to uh, uh, you know recognize the quality of the facility and anything else that we might want to interject into the letter okay i have a motion to send a letter do i have a second i'll second that motion okay so a motion and a second so i'm going to do a roll call for the historical commission uh, Joyce Rodericks. Uh, I'll support that motion. And um, I, I, what do I have to say? I, well, just that you support it or don't support it. Okay, I support yes. it. Okay. Connie Soule. Yes. Ruben Amaral. Aye. Richard Mancini. Yes. And Kristen Cantara Oliveira. I vote yes as well. So it is unanimous. So I will, um, I will draft up a letter and I will get that uh, out to you, Megan, within the next few days. Perfect, thank you so much. We really you. appreciate all you're, of your support. You're welcome, thank you for coming in. You really did a great job on the, on the mill. Thank you very much. So even if you don't win, you should be very proud. <laughs> I just can't wait to get my hands on the flint mill behind it. That'll be my trifecta. Oh, uh, that would be that'll be incredible. I love that mill. Let's do wait. Maybe love, maybe we'll I be in front it. of you here soon with the proposal there. But good. Uh, appreciate all your guys' support. You know, we've done a number of projects down there, and uh, just a pleasure to work with. And we're glad we can uh, adaptively reuse some of the some of the building stock that you have down there that shouldn't be demolished. We are too. Keep up the good work. Anything we can do to help, just just reach out. Let us know. We'll do. We appreciate okay. it. Thank, appreciate you. Thank it. you, and have Thank a good you. Week. Thank you as well. Okay. Moving on. Uh, so that was the only correspondence that I received. Um, next, old business. So I know Richard had asked me to put a couple of things on the agenda. So 710 Rock Street, um, which was the side porch. Uh, she had been doing work on the side porch without notifying us. And I know that um, a couple of you had been in contact with her. Richard, did you um, did you get an update on that? No, no, I did not. It's, you know, I, no, I did not. Um, okay. Uh, my uh, my opinion at this point is that we should get a letter out to her telling her and and probably check with our attorney first the city attorney to um, get a letter out to her telling her that that has to get corrected uh, it's been well over a year and nothing is being done and the the, the porch actually uh, I would say is in violation. It has no rails on it, so the so the porch itself is in violation, and and a, a, if I remember correctly, there are no backstops to the steps, so mm -hmm. that's all in violation of building code. Uh, so that should be the built the, the porch should be corrected and restyled per the existing style of that building. Okay, more historically uh, correct than it is. Right. But but there are code violations, and and I know that the building inspector allowed it to be put up temporarily 
until she could get it corrected. But mm -hmm. it's been over a year now and nothing is being done. So okay. uh, we should uh, we should uh, uh, check with the uh, our attorney and make sure that we can just get a letter out um, and and get that corrected or get fined. At this point, we have that ability to fine, and it it just looks like uh, that, that we're being drawn in that direction. Okay. Connie, so, and you I, dealt with her. Have what, what was your last conversation? I thought she was going to come before us with plans. That was the last conversation we had with her. She had, she had come before us when I she had zoomed in. Um, I think she was away out of state or something, but she was supposed to follow up with some plans and come before us, and that's it. That's the last time I've heard anything. And it's an eyesore. It's in the 40C, and it's it's terrible. It's a safety issue, and it's an eyesore. Right. And I have to assume that she got insurance money for it because someone someone drove into it. So, uh, uh, yeah. All right. So I can reach out to um, to the, to our corporation council. All right. I would like to make a motion at this point that we that you do that, and that if we're in in uh, compliance, uh, that we send her a letter uh, and a, attach a timetable and fines if necessary. Give give her sixty ninety days to get it corrected, or there'll be a fine per day. Uh, that, that's that would be a motion that I would make at this point because again it's been this way for I would say more 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 than a, much more than a year probably a year and a half at this right. point. Right. Okay. So what I'll need if you're going to make that motion, I need you to come up with a date, a, a time frame for her, and you're going to need to give me a um, a fine, a daily fine because I have to run that by corporation council. Okay. Well, I'll, so, I'll make the motion, give her 90 days to have perform corrective action. And uh, we know we can fine anywhere up to $300, but let's just make it a $100 a day fine. That would be my, my motion. Okay, so I have a motion to give her 90 days to correct the problem, which means she will also... Uh, in that time, so is that 90 days coming to us at the next meeting that we approve it and then she has 90 days to correct it? Is that Co correct from the 90 days from the date of receipt of the letter? Okay, it's from date of receipt of letter. So, okay, so the motion is to send a letter assuming that this is. Um, acceptable to Corporation Council. We send a letter telling her that she has 90 days from the receipt of the letter to correct the issues with the porch, which also means coming before us. And any day after the 90 days that it is not done, we will enact a hundred dollar a day fine. Do I have a second? We, we, may, it, we, we may. We, we may exert a hundred dollar fine. There might be circumstances where she comes in, sits with us, uh, then has to come back with a contractor and a set of drawings or something of that nature. So that might push it back and then we could absolve the hundred dollar fine for a future date. We could push it back. So I would say starting 90 days may impose a fine of a hundred dollars. If that's okay. okay with everyone else. Okay. I think that's fair. Give her a chance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It, I, and I think the situation now is, it may apply to her, that it's difficult to get contractors and, and it's difficult to schedule work. So that may be an issue. I don't know if that is an issue, but I'm suggesting that uh, that's part of the delay. 
Well, it, it's definitely an issue, but the problem is she hasn't come back before us in the first place to even show us anything right. that she's planning to do. So if she makes a good faith effort to come before us with plans and makes an effort at least to reach out to contractors, then like Rick said, we can always um, suspend any fines given the circumstances, but she hasn't even made a good faith effort to do anything about this. So that's that's where the problem comes in in the first place. So Connie, any thoughts? I agree and I'll second the motion. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. So I'm gonna do a roll call. Um, this is just the, we can all be part of the discussion, but the roll call is just for the Historic District Commission. Um, so, Connie Sewell? Yes. Richard Mancini? Yes. Jason Bouchard Naraki? Yes. And Kristen Cantara Oliveira? Yes. So, I will reach out to um, Attorney Rumsey and let him know what we want to do. And as long as he um, agrees with it and says that it is within our, you know, legal rights to do that, then I'll draft up a letter. I'll send it to all of you just to, um, to look over before I send it out to her. And then we will, uh, send it registered, registered mail. Okay. Any other discussion on that before we move on? Okay. So next up is, um, 518 High Street, which was the house that put the electrical box in front of the house and um, the, the building department did not give them, uh, the, the electrical inspector did not approve it as of yet, um, pending coming before us and said that he would not until we approve it. Um, do, we, do we have an update on that? Again, no, it's all in limbo. They, the, if, if you remember correctly, they were going to uh, get back to us. And I made the offer uh, and the recommendation uh, at the meeting that they call the utility company, get the build, electrical inspector, their contractor, the utility company, ourselves. I would volunteer to be there and let's discuss the installation of the meter in another location. Uh, they have not called us, and that's, this is going on the third month now, mm -hmm. and n no communications whatsoever. Uh, again, it's I, I drove by there today, and again, it's just sitting out there. There are a couple of trees that have been planted, yep. uh, but nothing has really changed. So uh, I would recommend, does anybody have any comment? Oh, am I going off on a tangent here? Nope. All right. That's... My my recommendation again is uh, that we send send them a letter, again giving them ninety days, and uh, imposing a fine, and we'll make the fine a hundred dollars a day. Again, check with Attorney Rumsey. Mm -hmm. See if we're okay. Uh, and again, uh, the. The meter could be uh, precedent has been there and established over the years that a meter could be replaced inside the building. Uh, meters are read remotely today, so there's no reason to have a meter in close proximity to the meter reader. Uh, the the only the only uh, question that someone could bring up. And, and this would probably be the fire department, is that there's a, a, a f the, what's happening is the fire department has required a safety, a switch to put in the meter socket so that in the event of a fire, they can go out and uh, cut the power off to the building by, by turning the breaker. It's generally a breaker, but by turning that switching device off. So by putting the meter and the socket inside the home the someone could say well that violates that particular uh, requirement well not so because we could uh, have the switch breaker uh, a, a shunt trip type 
with uh, it's just a low voltage or, or a, a line run to a switch by the door so the firefighter can have their regular fire box up there open the box hit the switch it would shunt the breaker out and disconnect the power so there's that ability to meet the, the requirements so there's no reason why that meter could not be placed inside the building. It does, it does not have to be uh, as obviously conspicuous uh, as it is now, in my opinion. I agree. Ruben, Said. what's your experience out there? I'm sure you run into that out in the field. I've been out of the, I've been out of the field for 20 years, so. Yeah, I unfortunately haven't seen this, uh, so I can't comment fully, but I do agree with what you're saying. Um, a, a lot of buildings now have the meters inside. Very rarely, if there's not enough room uh, on the inside, we'll put them out the outside, but it's typically on the back of the building and you do screening. Um, so yeah, if it's right on the front, and totally visible, then I agree. It can be relocated. It's pretty easy to locate these in an inconspicuous spot. Mm -hmm. I agree too. I agree fully. I think they had mentioned at when they came to us before that they were concerned about the meter not being read from the basement, but it, as we pointed out that a lot of us have the meters within our basements, they are read remotely. Even you know, you know, with a stone foundation like that house has a brick or stone foundation, it can be read. Um, so there's no, you know, there's no issue there. Um, but it's obviously, just in the wrong location currently. Right. I mean, we have technology now. Technology can do a whole lot of things. So it, th there's not a good excuse for it. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. So uh, Rick, do you want to? Put that in the form of a motion. I I do. I do. I just make a motion that we check with Attorney Rumsing, mm -hmm. and make sure that we're in in good standing legally. And if so, then we give this the homeowner ninety days to correct the situation. Uh, again, uh, I I don't mind going there and, and uh, speaking to the utility company and. Mm -hmm. and uh, the powers that be uh, so I'll, I'll offer that uh, but okay. then again if it's not corrected within 90 days then we have the ability and we may impose a hundred dollar per day fine okay so I have a motion to again after checking with attorney Rumsey to send a letter to the homeowners giving them 90 days to correct the problem and if it's not corrected in that amount of time, we may impose a hundred dollar a day fine. Do I have a second? A second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. I will do a roll call for historic district commission. Connie Soule. Yes. Jason Bouchard Naraki. Yes. Richard Mancini. Yes. Kristen Cantara Oliveira. I vote yes. So it is unanimous. So I will um I'll reach out to Attorney Rumsey about both of those issues. Uh, next up, we have the merger of the Historic Commission and the Historic District Commission. Um, Jason, do you want to? Um, so I uh, reached out to um, uh, Councillor uh, Pam Li uh, Liberty and just to see where we are at with that. Um, she uh, confirmed that Allen's portion or uh, uh, Corporation Council's portion is done. So it's now onto ordinance, um, which I believe she was asking to get that on their next meeting. Um, so whenever that is, um, it should be put up onto their next agenda. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to reach out to um, the chair of ordinance and just ask, just um, ask when that's going to be, when the meeting is going to be, and if they plan on putting it on. Yep. Good news, finally. <laughs> I know. 
It may it may happen within <laughs> a few months? Who knows? And then we can all finally vote. And um, so, and we also did. I I did receive. Uh, I don't know if I said this. I received an application um, from someone who's interested in being on the commission. So I am going to forward that to the mayor's office uh, with with a note from myself to uh, get that done. So. And I know we have, so all together we will have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we will, we will have one opening and then there's always the option of having um, alternates as well, which is not a bad idea because as you know, a, a lot of times we struggle just to get enough people for one meeting. So um, if we can have a full seven and then even a couple of alternates as backup, I think that would be that would be great. So if we can get one more person, we, we will have a full seven at least, so. Okay, and um, next under old business. So I sent all of you the preservation guidelines. Um, so I don't know if you all had the chance to, to look them over if you're, I don't know if, if you feel ready to discuss them yet, or if you um, if you feel like you need more time to do that? I've, I've reviewed them and I, I think they're great. And I'm very excited to, to get this completed. Yeah. So she said she's a, a little more than halfway done. And uh, that's wonderful because this is going to be so, so incredibly valuable to um, just anybody in the city, especially especially in the district. So we have something for people to go by because I know we have people come before us and and they're uh, sometimes a little confused as to how they, they should be doing things. And this just straight up will tell them and, and anybody in the city that's doing any kind of historic uh, preservation projects will be able to use this. So, um, I had a question uh, regarding the uh, under masonry and stucco, um, mm -hmm. her cleaning um, uh, options. Uh, one of which, or that it was not on the list, but um, where does steam cleaning fall under, if that's allowed or not? Because that's um, it has been it it, it is being done. Um, from my own personal experience, um, the company that I work for just had uh, two large uh, commercial structures rehabilitated in uh, downtown Providence, uh, one of which had uh, terracotta um, ornamentation that was steam cleaned um, to remove growth and, um, you know, decades of soot and that sort of thing. Um, and it's, I'm not, I'm not sure if that would fall, on, fall under um, gentle water cleaning. I don't, I, I'm not sure where that would fall under. Um, so that's the only question I really, from that particular um, section that I had. Um, other organizations I've noticed even like uh, in Newport, the Preservation Society that runs all the Newport mansions, they're actively using it um, on marble, um, at the Marble House, at the Elms, and even on limestone on their larger houses that have limestone. It is, it's, it's effective. I just don't know where that falls in, if that can be added or Okay. Any any thoughts on that? I can I can just send this to um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put everything together in a document and send the, our our comments and questions to uh, Dominique. So does anyone have any thoughts on that? Yeah, it should be included. It's very it's not very it's invasive. It you know. It's not, excuse me. And uh, it works well. And I think that should be included in there just as a guideline, just spell it out. Okay. Yeah, pressure washing and steam cleaning and things. Those are, those are just acceptable methods these days. So yeah. I concur. Right, I pref prefer the steam over the pressure wash too. Yeah. 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 It's pretty remarkable too when you see the before and afters. Um, I mean, blocks of stone that are literally black, and then you know, revealing a completely different color underneath it, and just through steam. It's a, it's tedious, but it's it's pretty pretty effective. The, well, we're then if we're talking about that with the with the state of the art uh, that's happening today, 
do would you think we should include a laser cleaning? Laser is being used today on tanks and and other areas, and it's very effective. And it's not that expensive any longer. Hmm. And it does it does one really good job. Mm -hmm. So, but on, are they using it on buildings or uh, just? Yes. Oh, sure. Yeah, you can use it on buildings. You can use it on a marble, on on stone structures. Uh, you can use it on uh, uh, steel plat. You can use it on plastic. Uh, uh, you can use it on painted surfaces. Uh, yeah. Well, the, I know that some people use it for uh, removal of paint. I just don't yeah. know if it's acceptable. So that it would be great to run that by her as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. But depending on the strength of, of the laser, because you can buy them in, in different power wattages, so, uh, the standard seems to be more in the 80 to 100, 120 watt is very, very strong. Uh, so, so depending on, on the size of the unit, uh, you can, you can, uh, again, you can do cleaning, you could do removal, but you can, you can actually clean paint. Uh, as opposed to a pressure washer or even a steam washer, and uh, you know, I, it does a great job. It uh, really, really takes the, the mm -hmm. residue right off. It gets rid of rust. Mm -hmm. If you've got metal uh, structures or metal areas with a tremendous amount of rust on it, this will take it right down to bare metal. Yeah, it's really very mm -hmm. efficient. So that mm -hmm. might you might want to add the laser also. Okay. Have you used that in the industry, Ruben? No, I actually haven't. Every masonry job I've done has been power washed. Mm -hmm. The thing with power washing, though, that's tough is, especially if you have something that's really delicate, um, which is why the steam, the steam is is a good option. Or something like that because i know we had talked to they were talking about one time um cleaning one of the monuments in um oak grove cemetery one of the one of the fancier um uh, plots and they were talking about power washing and and possibly not using it because of the delicate nature on the stone and and not wanting to uh wear away what, what's written on the stone So, okay, well, I will, um, I'll add those questions about uh, steam cleaning and laser cleaning. Yeah, especially uh, the, the laser works very, very well in, again, as Connie was just saying, to remove old paint. Uh, if you've got an old structure uh, and, and you want to remove the paint, uh, or if you've had a, a, a Probably a very very elaborate structure or door or, or or molding in your home that's developed a lot of dirt and uh, soil over the years. Again, the laser cleans that right off, and that's an area where you might not be able to use steam or or water. So I'm just I'm just making a suggestion. If we're going to add the others in there, we probably want to look at adding the laser. So would the laser remove the dirt without removing any kind of the varnish or finish on it? Yes, yes. Really? Yeah, if depending. I what you do is you adjust the laser accordingly. Wow. Yeah. Yep. If you look it up, you'll see videos on the removal. I just knew, I thought it was very expensive. So I wasn't sure, you know, if it was something that was. I didn't even know they were, they were using it for that. Yeah. Wow. Okay, well, we'll put that in. Now, overall, the, um, the the drafts that she's given so far, they're, it's fantastic. Um, the, they are. Um, and I can't wait to see the final product with the visuals, which is so helpful, um, especially the section on roofs where you have all the different examples and um, that it's just, it, it'll be easy enough for anyone to just pick up and reference and yeah. So. Okay, 
were there any other um, any other sections, any other thoughts? Well, I need more time definitely uh, to look this over. Um, we have a lot of expertise in this meeting um, and I'm not one of them. So I need to, um, to read this a little more carefully, such as the roofing. Uh, we all have problems. I think we've all had problems with roofing and gutters and that, that's a major um, damage that can be made to buildings. So I'd like to spend more time if that's part of your schedule, Madam Chairman. Um, yeah, we can we can do that. So what is the timeline on this? What um, what do you expect to have as the finished product at what time? Um, well, she didn't give us a timeline. I know she's working on um, other sections, but she's looking to have approval of the drafts. That way she can finish these sections and then go on to uh, working on the rest of it. So, I mean, as soon as we can, ideally, because we, we've already been kind of waiting for quite a while, so. I mean, are there any sections already that you feel comfortable with that we can tell her to go ahead and then maybe there's something that you wanna look a little further into and then we can hold off on that? Well, I would uh, suggest what we've already discussed. I think Jason and Rick, Ruben, um, Connie, they've already been pretty secure with the, um, the stucco. Okay. Would you like to establish a date on having a completion? Uh, would you like to say uh, uh, the 15th of March is our next meeting that we should at that point vote on the, the products that have been sent to us? Yeah, definitely. All right. So do you want that in a motion and then, or do you just- No, I don't, I don't think we need to make, no, I don't think we need to make a motion. Okay. Um, I mean, unless you want to just, if you want to make a motion to um, to refer masonry and stucco to her to with the comments and that she can do that one for the final then yeah, we, well we, we actually or, have we actually we have windows and doors uh, right we have windows and doors we've got the guidelines for masonry and stucco uh, we got the exterior maintenance uh, guidelines for roofing and the exterior woodwork. So as, as, as chairperson, uh, you could just establish a date and inform us that we should be prepared to vote on this on a given date. And, and you could use March the 15th, which is our next official meeting. And, and you have the authority to do that. And then on the 15th of March, we could either give you the comments that we have or vote on acceptance or anything that, you know, we come up with at that date. Okay. I thought that's what, I thought that's what we had just agreed to do. Um, yeah, but I'm saying aside from, I, I know the other sections, do you want to, the other sections we are going to discuss and vote on March 15th. But we did discuss masonry and stucco right now. Do we want to send that to her now and do the rest of them on the 15th? Or do you just want to hold it and send everything over on March 15th? That's what I'm saying. I would say send the information that Jason and Rick brought up about the cleaning. Okay. And let her come back to you with uh, her suggestions about that. And let's be prepared to vote, like share that with the board when she sends over that information. Okay. And then let's be prepared to vote with the next at our next meeting. And that's just it. Not, you know, I mean, she's sending this for suggestions for our eyes, right? To make mm -hmm. sure she's not making any errors or forgot anything or if we have input. So just send it over to her 
um, about the steam cleaning and the laser. Okay. Then that's what I'll do. I'll send her the comments that we have so far. Um, I mean, we can still discuss other things so far that we've that we've gone through, and then on the fifteenth, Joyce can also add in other comments at that time. But we can still discuss things now in other sections if we have other sections that we want to, and send those comments to her. We don't have to wait until the fifteenth to talk about this and have everybody send their comments last minute. I we can, you know, Joyce may go through it all and decide that there's nothing else that she wants to add. And then we've waited until the 15th. Well, can't we, if we see anything, like I I didn't see anything. I, I'm in total agreement with the entire thing. Right, I, I didn't felt have the insight. Way. I didn't have the insight that Jason and um, Rick talked about. But I mean, I think, comments could be sent to you so you could share it with her so she can you know in, in, uh, update her draft and then so that we can move forward I think it's crazy for us to just like wait around and we waited a long time for this and every delay every month that goes by is more delays so I would say you're sharing it with everyone Jim has also been sharing it so that we can see it in advance mm -hmm. so why not like as we see things, send the comments to you and you can share it with her. And that way come the 15th of next month, we should be prepared to say yay or nay. Okay. So, but right now, besides the masonry and stucco section, do any of you have anything else that you wanna bring up about any of the other sections? No. No. I have not. I, I've given it a glossary look. I have not really pinpointed it all. And I have not seen anything that jumped out. Uh, that's me personally. I, I will, within the next week or two, be more thorough in my second reading. Uh, but I, I, I think it's great at this point. I have no, no questions or problems with it. Okay. That's me personally. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see anything either. I thought that the whole thing was wonderful. But again, some of you have a little more expertise in certain areas and things like that. I wouldn't have thought that as far as steam cleaning or even laser cleaning, I wouldn't have thought that. So that's why, you know, we need all all eyes on it to um, to pick up on things. So all right, so then as you all go through it, send any comments that you have to me. I will forward those comments to Dominique and then she can update the drafts, send them back, and then we can vote on March 15th at the meeting. Okay, sounds good. And then if she sends any others in the meantime, I will forward them to you um right away as soon as i get them okay good okay. and and jim's been very good sending those out also which is really good <clears throat> okay any other discussion on that no. no okay so moving on uh new business does anyone have any new business Anything they'd like to bring up? Um, so I'd like to share with the uh, with the board that um, so I've been in discussion with um, uh, the members of the current board of the New England chapter of the Society of Architectural Historians. Um, I will be uh, uh, joining their board on um, at their next meeting on March seventh. Um, and from what I was told, I am will be the first representative from Fall River. Um, to join their board, which is pretty exciting. Um, and um, congratulations! Thank That's you. Awesome. <laughs> um, so they they've asked me to uh, present. Uh, they have a number of people that will be presenting on their research um, projects, and um, they have asked me to present basically more like an armchair tour of Fall River because they, from 
their records, they haven't had any members or anything or anyone uh, from the city. And uh, especially for those that don't live in the area, I mean, this is all of New England. So mm -hmm. we're talking Maine, uh, people who are so far away. And um, so this is a good chance to showcase the range of architectural styles and buildings that are here in the city. Um, so I'm pretty excited about doing that. It's very, uh, I think I have about 20 minutes <laughs> to present. So there's plenty, plenty to talk about and show. Um, so if there's any, anything in particular that anyone um, uh, can think of that I should almost always, uh, or that I should talk about, obviously I'll talk about the mills, um, the houses in the highlands and, you know, the, we have, you know, such an, an array of of buildings here in the city, uh, even even the, the the triple decker tenements, and um, so there's so much to talk about. Um, but um, so if there's any anything that you could think of, because I, I I'll be going through and putting together you know, a, a presentation, a tour, that sort of thing. Um, uh, it's all remote, or it'll, the the meeting will be virtual. So. Um, I think it's just a matter of putting together, a, a, I guess, a PowerPoint or something to present. Um, but no, it's it's exciting. Um, so I'm interested 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 to see what um, what other people are doing in the communities and you know preservation wise. Uh, are you aware, Jason, of the PowerPoint that Kristen has? I don't know. I don't think so. Okay, the, uh, Kristen has a a very nice PowerPoint uh, showing a, a lot of the historical uh, structures and and uh, in the city it, and, and a lot of it some of it is is geared more towards the historic commission here mm -hmm. but there's a lot of good material in there that you might want to use and, sure. and you can just draw it out you could check with Kristen but that, okay. it's, yeah. a, it's a nice PowerPoint okay Jason what is that date again that you need this um, it's uh, so our, we're meeting on March seventh. Um, yeah. All right. I have information as well. Um, significant, mm -hmm. significantly, um, uh, and I think even some of it pertains to um, quite some time ago when there was an architectural walkthrough of the city of Fall River. Mm -hmm. So I can I can send that to you and. Um, there's, there's quite a bit. In fact, there's a key article that I have here in my um, half of my room, which is the office on mill architecture, uh, in addition to other architectural parts of Fall River, not just the mills, but the um, residential architecture as well. I'll send that to you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, in the PowerPoint presentation, I'll send that to you, Jason. Um, I've done different ones because what I was doing, I was using those when I was going around to the different neighborhood associations to basically to say who we are and what we do, <clears throat> excuse me. But I was using um, pictures of buildings in different in the different neighborhoods. So each one is changed up, but I have a lot of the, the photos of these buildings. So I can send you any of the photos that I have, I can put them okay. in a file and, and send them to you because I did get some really good ones. And then mm -hmm. what I did too, I have some um, befores and afters of things that were falling apart and renovated, but also things that were here and then were demolished as well. So I have mm -hmm. I have both of that. Excellent, thank you. Um, I uh, A lot of what I've, at least research wise, and I, I love to learn more about a building that I might find interesting to see from the street and I'll do a little bit more research on it. And um, I'm noticing too, I, I go onto the MACRIS, um, the Mass Historicals uh, database for all the for, um, Form Bs that were filed. And um, when these were initially done in the 70s and 80s, a lot of times uh, the architects are not listed. And that's been kind of like my, my key thing is just to look up as if I can, architect info. And it's, I don't know why I'm focusing on that, but um, you know, I'm finding that um, you can put together a portfolio of these architects who, you know, they're they're no longer around, their records are likely lost, and you can put together a portfolio that you can learn on, and you can almost see similar traits from one house or one building to the other. Um, and it's interesting to see too, especially in Fall River, um, before 
the highway came through, there's only really um, the means of access into the city were either by boat, uh, by train over the Slates Ferry Bridge, um, and access to places like to Providence required uh, almost always a train a train ride. But you have this influence too from you know, a lot of architects from not in Fall River um, that came to the city to um, that were hired from well-to-do clients and uh, did their work here in the city. Um, so it's pretty fascinating to see what, you know, what has been done, um, and especially with the mill architecture too, because you have a lot of it is all locally quarried stone and, um, yeah, so there's plenty, plenty to talk about. I think it's great. I think it's exciting. It's exciting for you. It's an honor for you, but also the fact that you'll get to, um, get our name out there at Fall River and put it in a in a better light than we yep. seem to have gotten over yes. the years and finally be known for something mm -hmm. positive. I think that's a that's a great thing for us. Yep. It's very exciting. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Showcase as well. What's that? Um, showcase as well. well I will. <laughs> oh, we will. How do they how do they uh, screen this uh, competition? Do they were you considered with other com uh, cities and towns or how do they do this? Um, their board members uh, nominate uh, individuals that they would like to see on the board. Um, uh, the uh, my colleague who nominated me, uh, I work with. I've, I've worked with her on projects with the Providence Preservation Society. Um, uh, often, when they do their house tours every year, I'm usually the one that writes their guidebooks. So I'm researching all the houses that are showcased on the tours, um, and they do. This is an annual tour for them. Um, so I do a lot of work when, in that respect. And if there's any side projects that come up. Um, and uh, the company that I work for as well, I do quite a bit of research when it comes to um, the buildings that we own, uh, that the company owns in Providence um, for you know tax credit purposes. And um, so um, it was just a matter of being nominated from uh, by a board member. Um, so uh, and I submitted my resume and that sort. And um, so it was, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be able to serve on that board. You should be. That's a great honor. Congratulations. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Uh, so do we have any other uh, new business? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, our next scheduled meeting is Tuesday, March 15th at 6 p.m. So just be prepared. Uh, at that point to go over the guidelines and vote. And like uh, like we had said, send any information, any any uh, comments, thoughts, whatever that you have. In the meantime, to me, I will forward those to Dominique. And um, I am assuming our next meeting will be virtually by Zoom. If that changes, of course, I'll let you know. But right now we're just planning to do Zoom uh, for the next meeting. So with that, uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion that we adjourn. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second. I will do a roll call first for historical commission. Joyce Rodericks. I say yes. Okay, Connie Soule. Yes. Ruben Amaral. Yes. Richard Mancini. Yes, via Zoom. Kristen Cantara, I say yes. So meeting is adjourned for the historical commission and now for the historic district commission can i get a motion to adjourn i'll make a motion i have a motion do i have a second i'll second motion and a second roll call connie soul yes richard mancini yes jason, Zoom. jason bouchard naraki yes and kristen cantara Oliveira. yes to adjourn so meeting is adjourned at 6.57 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Okay, you too. Thank, Thank you. you very much.